Hey, it's Swiss, and today we're going to talk about getting started with Pwn Tools. I want to keep each video here concise so they can be used for reference, uh, but if you feel I leave something important out, hit me up on Twitter. I'll link it below. So to start, um, Pwn Tools is an awesome Python framework that is most useful in CTFs, uh, but it can be used in some other situations too. For this video, we're going to be talking about situations where you are given a binary to exploit and then a host and port to connect to to exploit it remotely. So for demonstration purposes, I've written a binary using bits from Pico CTF and Brett Lee's How to Exploit Binary since I'm bad at C. It has a buffer overflow and a function that we want to get to, this give shell. Um, that's not called in the actual binary. And if we check out the thing, we can see it's at this address. And we can see that we don't really have anything to worry about, and we can get straight to it. Um, now if we try connecting to that port, we get some text. You spit some in, it spits some out. Um, so now we need to kind of start crafting our exploit. So I'm not really going to be talking about exploit methods. That'll be in other videos. Um, but when you begin working with a binary, you want the binary name, test vuln, and the remote host and port, localhost1234, and then you do pwn template, the binary name, host, and port. And this generates this awesome template that sets up a few things for you. Um, there's three key things in this. There's the exe, which is an elf loaded binary. We'll get to this in future videos and why it's useful. Uh, the UI, which is part of importing with the pwn. Um, that's just about making pretty exploits. We'll also get to that in future videos. Uh, and then the most important one is this IO. And that's interaction with the binary and what we're going to be mostly discussing in this video. Uh, this, so now let's put that into a file. And the IO framework is great because if everything works correctly, you can use the same exact code to exploit locally and remote. The only difference is you include this capital local on the command line when you run it with Python. Uh, and it'll exploit it locally rather than remote. So with local, local process. Remote, you just don't include that. It connects, same thing. So there's two things, right, with I.O. You have input and you have output. Um, so getting the output from it is about receiving. So there's really there's multiple ones out there, but there's only two that I really end up using. There's io.receive and tull. And this will receive until a specific string. So if we remember, uh, checking out this, um, it says give me some text colon. So what if we receive until text colon and let's say print that out. It prints it out. Uh, the other one that I use all the time is io.receive line. And what that does is it receives until a new line. I mean, it's really just an alias, but it's a really useful alias. Uh, it also has the awesome option of putting false in here to not include the new line. So again, prints it out. Uh, this matters more when you're receiving things that you need to use elsewhere in the code, like when you're exploiting leaks. Uh, but that's pretty much all that I use when I'm receiving data. Now when you're sending data, um, the two primary methods that I use are io.send, just sends the string. So if we do an io.receive line here, and then an io send test. And then we'll print the second receive line. We're not going to print the first.
sorry. Then we receive that test back. Now, if we do this, now the other thing that I use instead of send is actually send line. And the only thing that send line really does is it adds that dot, that uh, new line at the end. But getting typing new lines all the time is tiring, so use send line. <laughs> so that's pretty much how those two interact with the program. It's how you're going to interact with 90% of this. Um, and the last thing is this IO interactive, which You've seen me get to this a couple times now, so let's remove everything except for IO Interactive. When it runs, it, it prints everything, and everything you send gets printed back. So now let's actually use this to exploit the binary. We knew that the binary was receiving 128 bytes, um, and then you need to add 8. So we'll receive a line to get that first one. IO.send line of... Uh, 136 times a plus, and uh, let's get that address again. There we go. I'll show in a future video a much better way to do this, but for now we will do this. Sorry about that. I had cut the video because I made a stupid error. Um, over here, I typed in 04. That should have been 40. Um, I hate typing in addresses backwards, and I will show in a future video a better way to do that, but I didn't want to do it as part of this video too. Uh, so now, we could take that exploit, and we run it locally. We do that. We type ls. Oh, cool. We got, we got the shell. Um, so now, because Pwn Tools is awesome, I just delete local. It runs, runs remotely. We see that, and now let's check out flag.txt, and we would get the CTF flag. So that was a quick overview of Pwn Tools and why it should be why why it's really nice to use in CTFs. Um, and I hope it was useful for you guys. I hope that you guys are able to reference this in the future. Um, and I will continue on to make better ways to use Pwn Tools and the cool functions that everybody ignores.